Hi, my name is Hermann Gier from SPL and today I'd like to show you our new Medican interface which is this little small box over here and this little box gives you 64 channels in and out to your recording device to your door via USB and on the other side it connects to MADI and it connects to MADI all, of, all MADI interfaces. We have one MADI interface in our program which is the medicine this is the one over there specialty on the medicine is that this one has 16 analog IOs very high quality IOs so all in all we can um, we have 64 channels input 64 channels output on, on this device all going through USB to your um, workstation the um, Medican itself is uh, um, powered by an FPGA, which is uh, the fastest way of uh, um, computing data uh, and allows to give you very low latency monitor mixes. So typically we get a round trip latency of about less than four milliseconds. And to control the uh, monitor mixes, we have a, a monitor software, which is uh, the Medican monitor mixer, which you see over here. And um, I'd like to show you a bit more about this mixer because there are a few features in there that are um, worth noticing. So as you can see, the monitor mixer has about three major sections. The one here on top, which is all your um, mm, monitor mixes and the mixer provides seven individual mixes that can consist out of 32 channels. So you click on the mixer up here and the one that you click on is the one that is active. Now obviously we can we can load a mixer in here that is and I have a session prepared that I can load up. And now you can see all of the mixes are present. This was, is the mix that I'm using for monitoring on this and I only have my door playback here. The first monitor mix goes to my drummer and he has all the drum channels in here. The next one is going to my lead singer and the lead singer has a few channels here and so forth. Now, you can also get a different configuration. That means in here, you can see we have 24 input channels and 8 door returns. But if you want to have a different setup, then you just go on uh, New up here. We don't want to save this for now. And now you have a selection that you can, you can either choose just 32 input channels or the one that we just had, 24 inputs and 4 door playbacks, 16 by 16 or 8 by 24. For this example, we just go to 24 inputs and six and eight, uh, sorry, eight door playbacks. So, and again, I'm going to load my mixer like this. You can also see in the channels that we have uh, um, channel name, channel labeling already active. And in order to make this um, easy and also in case of let's assume you have a rental place and your studio is already wired you can give one of these configuration files to your customer and tell him listen we have a channel label library which looks like this and this is all pre-edited and all of the names for the channels are already there so if you go into the drum room here are all the drum tracks already labeled just uh, um, load it up and you can use it and let's, I, will, I will show you how this works. If I, in this case, would select channel number 17, boom, it already labels itself with base because that's what's in the library. Everything you added in here and you add will automatically update the library. So that's a continuous process and you always have the latest uh, um, labeling available. The mixer can form groups and can form stereo groups. The, the, the stereo groups are the one with the highest priority. And for example, I click on the chain in between two channels and immediately 
the panorama jumps to full left and full right, which is indicated by a white handle. If it's not fully left, you see that the handle stays gray. And if it's center, then it's orange, like this. So that gives you a good indication, without even knowing where it is, the color tells you what state the panorama is in. In a, a, a stereo fader, obviously, both channels work the same. Um, the mono and the, and, and the solo function works for both. That's what you would expect from it. But you can keep down the Alt key and, and only modify one, and then it stays in the group. Now you can make groups beyond the stereo groups. You can make more. Uh, you can group any kind of channel configuration you like. In our example, you see over here we already have a guitar group which is orange. Now I'm going cr to create a, a second group. Not sure if that makes much sense here, but it's just for showing it to you. And also, you can make these groups and, and leave channels in between free. Everything you know from grouping is available here. Um, the third big section is the one that you see here at the bottom. Now, and that is something that we've been missing on other um, mixers, and that's a simple overview about the whole state of the system. And 64 channels, input, output, it's pretty hard to keep track where is what, especially when you have seven different mixers. Now, who is using what channel? Where is, is this already occupied or isn't it occupied? How do you know all this? And um, we've been thinking about how to illustrate this in, uh, in, a, in, in, a, in a way that you don't have to click anywhere. It's just always present and you just have to look and you see what is being used. And I want to show you how this looks like. For example, as you can see, I'm now working in my mix number three. Mix number three down here, you see there are a few numbers labeled in blue. And the input is blue, so this means all these blue numbers are actually the channels that are used in this mixer. And now I'm going over to my drummer on mix number one, I click here. And now you see that all of the, 21st, the first 24 channels are all blue, because these are the channels I'm using in his mix. So wherever I click, I have immediate, immediate response about which channels I'm using. In channel number 4, I'm currently using nothing, as you can see, on the input side. On the output side, you see that there is monitor, mix 1, mix 2, labeled to, resp to resp uh, 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 certain channels. Now let's take a look at monitor. Monitor up here, as you can see, is in my channel num 1 and 2. And it says down here, 1 and 2 is monitor. Okay, you see here 3 and 4 is mix 1, 17, 18 is mix 2, and you, in, you always know how many mixes are actually active and already rooted. If I would change my monitor output and let's say go to 2122 instead, it jumps away from here and it's been, sorry, it's been shown here as channel um, 21 and 22. So that gives you a very, very good overview. Same, by the way, applies to all the door channels, which are green. And as you can see here, number one and two is green because that's number output one and two is where my door channels come from. Let's take a look at the individual mixes and the settings that I can do in the mixes. Um, the first mixer is my monitor mixer. Well, obviously, this is where I monitor all uh, um, um, the mix I'm making in the workstation together with the, the, uh, the channels I want to listen directly to. Your options here are you can, you can share mono, obviously, you can, you can face revert the input, you can mo monitor uh, left solo, right solo. And you have a dim function. And the dim function is usually used when you use the talk. Which I'm come, there's a very special talk section that I will talk about a, little, um, a bit later. Uh, the dim uh, has to be activated when you talk to prevent feedback, but the amount of dim can be set. You get five values from zero to minus 20 dB right here. You can mute the whole thing, 
right? Easy. For your artists, you have uh, the possibility to first say, okay, is my artist listening in mono or in stereo? Or is he like what lead singers sometimes do, only using the left cup of the, of the headphone or the right cup of the, cat, of the headphone? So you can, you, can, and you, uh, you can select left mono, right mono, full mono or stereo here. Now, you're going to make a monitor mix and you want to know in the studio oh, what, I'm saying, what is it that I'm sending out to him. So you press to mon, which means to monitor. And now on your speakers in the control room, you will listen to mix number one. And you can see that because this is orange, to monitor is orange and the fader turns orange. And it tells you what I'm currently listening to is a mix I'm sending out to an artist. In this case, to artist number one. Obviously, you, could, you can set the volume how loud, you, how loud you want to listen to it here with the fader. The next thing is a copy to button. This is very handy. Now, let's assume you, you made this whole setup for your drummer. And as you can see, that was a lot of work. And uh, now you get a percussionist coming in. And he probably needs pretty much the same or uh, something similar. And you want to use that. Now you go for copy to, click on it. And the pull down gives you a selection between... Uh, um, mixer number two up to number six. Number one is in brackets because that's the mixer that we're copying from. So let's say I'm copying it into number six. Now mixer number six gets all the settings from mixer number one and now you can make your individual changes here and uh, save the whole preset down here in, this, in the preset section. The preset always saves all of the mixes. The next thing, let's say number six now, is a talk feature. Now, as you can see, next to the number six, we have the talkback section here. I can select an input, let's say input number 26. And to input number 26, I'm, I'm, I'm inserting a microphone and a microphone preamplifier. And now I can use that as a talkback and, and send it anywhere to any mix. Um, I have two options of doing that, um, either as a, a touch button, which means only as long as I click on the mouse, this will be uh, um, on and off or on, on a hold. Hold means it stays on and I have to really switch it off again. Talk to all is also possible. You can, you can also make talk a, a one talk group. Let's say I, I press talk to all, but I don't want to talk to three and four, just to the others. Then it always remembers the last setting of talk to all and if you want to add them again later just click on them now they are in and it remembers the last setting a mixer is one thing but we wanted to have an additional feature a recording feature and we think this is very very handy we have so many cases where we're playing with the band live or uh, um, rehearsing in the studio then uh, we just want to uh, to capture what we're doing there Pretty easy, down here in the section, you have a recording button. Now you click on the recording button and it asks you for a recording path. Now you want to select, um, uh, yeah, you select the recording path. You, you, you give it a session name, let's say session eight, for example, enter. And now you can go click okay. But I want to talk about ARM inputs automatically, which is a Click box, the checkbox that you have in here. If you activate this, then as you can see, all of the input channels now have a rectangle around the number, which means I'm in arm mode. I'm arming my input channels. Now you can click on channels that you want to record by hand, as I have to do now. But for 64 channels, that's quite long. And what we thought of to make this easier is now if the band is playing and you um, you activate in arm inputs automatically as we just did and all of the inputs that show a signal as an input will automatically turn red you can then by hand switch them on and off again if you like if you have to so let's assume we have all the re the, the channels that we want to uh, to record activated then we're going to press the play button and recording starts. If you stop the play because somebody just 
didn't get the one. Uh, and you have to, to start again. And you don't activate recording. You are staying within the session. And the next click on the play button will record the second take. And there is a very cool labeling behind it. So you will, you will, there will be a new folder. That's been called session number one, take number two. And then uh, all of the tracks will be labeled session one, track two, kick. Channel one, take two, snare. All the labelings that you already put into your session, in, into your channel library, will automatically be used to label all the channels. So that allows you to immediately record as many takes as, as you like and, and later on select which take you want to import into the workstation to, uh, to edit them. If you stop the session, that means you click on uh, recording again, now the session is closed and no more takes are, will be recorded. The next click on recording will ask you for a new session name. So as the last thing, um, we have a mute all button down here. Now mute all is pretty much the panic button. Uh, we put this in here because sometimes there is the situation where the workstation or the computer or any digital device hangs up and spits out zero dB uh, full scale nonsense into your speakers, into the headphones, which is very annoying. And before you, you, you know what's going on, you need to switch it off in one uh, in, in a central position. And that's the mute all button down here that uh, mutes, shuts down all of the channels. It's a safety precaution. Yes, that is our little trip uh, around the, uh, the medical monitor mix. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I wish you lots of fun using it. We believe it's one of the slickest and uh, easiest to use monitor mixes there is a few gadgets that uh, you only find here um, it's going to be fun to work with that yeah. enjoy and have a good time bye bye